Okay, so this video is covering chapter 17 of Groundwork for Better Vocabulary. Um, if you have your book, you can open it up to page 130. All right, so uh, let's read through these uh, through these words and, and make a guess at the parts of speech. So we have bewilder, communicate, and that last sound is eight, deceive, earnest, emotion, that one ends in T-I-O-N, fiction, which is also ending in T-I-O-N, investigate, so again with that eight sound, legible, so this one is ending in obel, um, outspoken, and theory. So our first one here is bewilder. The large new school at first bewildered Anton, but after a day or two, getting around was no longer confusing to him. My grandmother's poor health bewildered her doctor until he found out that she wasn't taking her medicines. So bewilder means to puzzle, but really what it means is, is it means uh, to confuse someone. Um, it means that um, confuse in the sense of you don't understand what the reason um, is for something. Um, so, um, in the first example, right, when you go, when you, when, uh, he goes to a new school, he's bewildered there because he doesn't understand where things are, right? Is so is confused in the sense of not understanding the reasons for things or how, how things work. Um, in the second example, right, the, the doctor didn't understand the reason for why uh, the grandmother was was doing so poorly until he found out um, found out the reason. So bewildered is often is often used in this meaning of um, it's it's confusing because someone doesn't understand how things work or how the reasons um, uh, the reasons for something are. Um, once once the person understands, they're no longer um, bewildered, they're no longer confused. All right, so the next one here is uh, communicate, and this one ends in that eight sound, which means it's a verb. Ruby and I rarely see each other, but we communicate often by sending text messages. Even today, many people still communicate by telephone. Um, so communicate means to exchange information. Um, now, one thing to keep to keep in mind here is if we look at both of these sentences, we see that communicate is often um, uh, in in these two sentences is accompanied with by. Now, that's not the only um, preposition that it's accompanied with. Um, it'll be often accompanied with um, the preposition with. So, uh, when we have communicate by, the thing that follows by is is the um, the thing that you are using to communicate. So in the first example, we say com communicate by sending text messages means the method of communication is texting. In the second example, communicate by telephone, um, uh, the method of communication is, is telephone. Now when we say communicate with, what follows that is the person who you are talking to or exchanging information with. Um, so on page 131, communicate is number one, where it says to exchange or give information. So communicate is not necessarily just to talk, although talk could be a synonym with it, but it really means that you are, are passing along um, information from one point to another point. Our next one here is deceive, and this one is a verb. In order to deceive a buyer, a used car seller sometimes turns back the mileage counter on the car. Mary deceived her boyfriend when she went out with Paul behind his back. So in this one, um, deceive means to fool. Um, but really, it, it, to f by fool, we mean to trick someone or to do something um, uh, to make someone believe one thing where the truth is is not the same. Um, on page 131, it's number nine, and it says to make someone believe something that's not true. So deceive um, it means to make someone believe something that isn't actually true. So in, uh, in religious terms, um, I'll give you two examples. One is from uh, comic books, and this is actually from... Uh, <laughs> 
an old the old Norse religion. Um, so in in that religion, there's a god whose name is Loki, and his and he is the great deceiver. If you have watched um, the Avengers movie, I think in the first Avengers movie we have Loki, and Loki is a trickster, and he is able to create um, images to make people see things that aren't really there. Um, in terms of you know modern religions in 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 both Islam and and in Christianity, the idea is that Satan or Shaitan is the great deceiver. He's the one who tricks people and makes people believe things um, are are true, but are not really true. So in the first example with the with the used car seller. Um, the um, seller of the car is tricking the person into thinking that the car is less used than it actually is. Um, in the second example, right, uh, Marcy is deceiving her boyfriend. She thinks that she's being faithful, that she's being good, but she's actually doing something bad and tricking him about it, not telling the truth. So our next one here is uh, earnest, and this one is an adjective. I like our new babysitter because she's very earnest. She clearly takes her job very seriously. Jimmy seemed earnest when he promised to clean the windows by Friday, so I was surprised when he hadn't done them. So in this case, earnest means serious, um, but it also means um, uh, honest. Honest in the sense of... Um, uh, when, when we describe someone as earnest, it's honest in the sense that you believe that they are going to do what they're, they say they're going to do. On page 131, it's number three, and it says serious and sincere. So what this means is that, like in the first example, and saying the babysitter is very earnest, it means that she's, that she's a kind of person who is serious about doing um, her job. And in this case, she's honest um, about doing what she says she's going, what she's going to do. Um, so in the sef second example, it says, you know, he seemed earnest. It seemed like he was really going to clean the windows. But so that's why it was surprising when he hadn't done them, because he seemed so serious and, and truthful about, about that. Um, the next one here is emotion, and this is a noun, and our clue there is that T-I-O-N. Um, Stan rarely shows his emotions. We have to guess what he's really feeling. Many people have trouble talking about their emotions, especially anger and fear. So emotions um, are, are feelings. Um, on 131, it's number four, and it, and it adds to feeling. It says a strong feeling. Um, but an emotion really is is how how you feel um, about something. It's just another word um, that you can use for the word feeling. So in the first one, it, it says that he rarely shows his emotion, meaning that he hides what he's feeling. Um, and in the second one, it gives two examples of emotion, anger and fear. So these are um, different types of feelings. Our next word here is fiction. Again, this one's ending in the T-I-O-N, which gives us a clue that it's a noun. Some newspapers print obvious fiction, such as nine-year-old girl has triplets who weigh 100 pounds more than she does. Uh, one of Mark Twain's most amusing pieces of fiction is his story about a Connecticut man who travels back in time uh, to the time of King Arthur. So fiction means um, made, up, uh, made up writing. Um, on page 131, it's number seven. Uh, literature consisting of imaginary stories, anything made up. So fiction is often used, this word literature means books, right, or writing. So fiction is often used um, to talk about any piece of writing that is not, um, that is not true, that comes from the writer's imagination rather than um, wholly from something that is um, uh, completely true. So, um, for example, um, a movie or, or a book like Harry Potter we would consider fiction, right? This is not something very, very that that is true um, at all. Um, however, a book like um, a book that said uh, that was say a biography or the story of Barack Obama um, would be considered nonfiction because it it is true. All right, it's based on um, on truth. 
Um, but fiction does doesn't have to just be books. It can also it can talk about you know anything. Movies can be fiction. Something that I tell you can be fiction. The focus is is that it's not true, um, but it is often used with writing. So the next one here is investigate, and this one ends in that eight sound, which makes it a verb. So the FBI has been called in to investigate the disappearance of some important papers from a government laboratory. Um, when I heard a noise downstairs at 3 a.m., I lay still in bed, too frightened to get up and investigate. So investigate in this case means to look into. Um, uh, so one of the words we had before was um, detect. And we said that the word detect means to notice something, right? Um, investigate means to detect something, but to do it purposely. So when you detect something, you may or may not be paying it. You may not, your purpose may not be to, to notice that thing. But when you investigate, it means that you are intentionally trying to find out um, the reason for something. Um, on page 131, investigate is number 10. And it says to explore or examine carefully in order to learn the facts. So you're trying to find out the facts about something, trying to find out the, the reasons of something. Um, we often hear the word investigate in the noun form when we're talking about the police. So the police investigate um, a, a crime or there is a police investigation, which is the noun form of that word. Um, but it, investigate means to look into carefully for the purpose of finding out the reason why something happened uh, or the facts behind it. Our next one here is legible, and this one is I-B-L-E, right? Sometimes A-B-L-E or B-L-E, which clues us into it being an adjective. My father used to make me write, rewrite my sloppy homework. I can barely read this, he'd say. Make it legible. The fancy script on the new restaurant sign isn't very legible. Does it say Peretti's, Pirelli's, or Papetti's? Um, so legible means easy to read. Um, uh, on, on page 131, legible is, it says clear enough to be read. It's number, what is it, number six. So if we look at the pictures here, we see two signatures. Now the, the one on top is legible. You can read what that says. It says John Adams. The one on the bottom is not legible. You can't, uh, you'd have to guess as to what that name that name is um, uh, so so legible is a word that you're often going to see in its negative form which is illegible um, you may have a teacher write this on your paper if you have very sloppy handwriting but illegible means that uh, it can't be read so legible means that it's clear enough to be able to be read um, our next one here is outspoken, and this one's an adjective. Being outspoken doesn't have to mean being rude. It's possible to say what you really think without insulting other people. The host of the radio call-in show is extremely outspoken. She's not afraid to disagree strongly with her callers. So outspoken means open and truthful. Um, it's number eight on page 131. Direct and open, not shy about stating one's opinion. All right, so if we look at this word, we have two parts to it. We have this word out um, and, and then spoken. So when we talk about someone who's outspoken, it means that they, um, they will say what they think, um, regardless of whether, uh, regardless of what other people might think about it. Um, the opposite of outspoken might be shy, but shy just means that someone doesn't like to, to speak pop, uh, publicly. So it's, it's not all of the meaning. Outspoken also has this additional meaning of that someone, someone is willing to, to tell the truth um, uh, um, or willing to state their opinion or willing to say what they, what they believe, um, no matter what the situation is. Right. So if you think about that in in any class you're in, there's always going to be someone um, who's outspoken, meaning they're not afraid to raise their hand and to give their opinion in any situation. 
Um, and there's going to be also a lot of people who are not outspoken, people who would prefer not to say um, what they what they believe or not to say the answer, even if they know um, what the answer is. Um, so our last word here is theory, and theory is a noun. According to the theory of evolution, plants and animals have developed in, in ways that help them do well in their environment. The detective's theory was that the killer was a short man with dark hair, but the murderer turned out to be a blonde woman wearing a dark wig. So um, a theory is an explanation. Um, on page 131, theory is, um, let's see, uh, I'm trying to find it here. Uh, theory is number five, um, an explanation based on facts, a statement believed to be true. So when we talk about a theory, it means uh, the theory is um, uh, um, the explanation of why or how something happened. So in the first example, we have the theory of evolution, which is an explanation of why um, plants, or, or, or rather why or how plants and animals are the way that they are today. Um, the theory of ex of evolution explains, you know, how things living today are related to things that that are no longer living, and and um, and explains the connection between um, different kinds of animals um, and different kinds of plants as well. So basically, it's an it's an explanation with that also has a lot of facts um, backing it up. It's not just my idea but it's an explanation supported by a lot of facts. Now, a theory um, is something that, that can be believed by a lot of people, but a theory is not the same thing as a fact, right? A fact means that it, it's something that is true um, that, that people can't disagree about. A theory is not that. It's just an idea or an explanation, um, but it's an explanation that does have support. Um, but we can't say that it's a fact. Um, theory in, so in, the, in the second um, example in talking about a murder, uh, the police will have a theory about you know, who, who uh, committed the crime, and it will be based on certain facts. Um, in this example, the theory was incorrect, um, but it's still a theory because it's backed up by, um, by evidence and other support. Okay, so that's it. So go ahead and do, um, do the questions. Um, and we'll review those in class and make sure to do, do the online activities as well. All right, take care. See you in class. Bye.